emotion regulation skill is focusing on the acronym of PLEASED. So when we are talking about um, PLEASE, we're referring to emotional well-being, emotional self-care. And we know that um, when we are listening to our emotions, when we're taking care of ourselves, um, it is easier to listen to our emotions. So emotion regulation skills involve taking care of both our physical and our mental health. And that's what the acronym of PLEASED is talking about. So the very first skill that we talk about in emotional uh, self-care is physical health. So the importance of taking care of ourselves uh, physically. So not just uh, exercise, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but also making sure that if we're sick, if we have an injury, that we're accessing appropriate care to take care of those injuries or illnesses. Um, are we taking our medications as prescribed? Are we exercising? Are we eating? All of those different different pieces um, that would be really important to our physical health. We sometimes in our groups will ask clients to think about a time when they've been sick. Even with just a simple cold or a flu, if you think about your emotions at that time um, and how it's a little bit more difficult to be in control, you might feel a little bit more teary, a little more vulnerable when you're feeling unwell. The second skill is listing our strengths and our barriers. Clients often have a difficult time identifying what their strengths are, uh, but this is going to be really important because they already have a lot of skills. So we want to acknowledge the things that they're doing well, and we also want to acknowledge some of the successes that they've had and the things that, that have helped them to be successful. On the flip side of that, it's also important to identify any barriers that might prevent them from taking care of their emotional well-being. So some barriers might be not knowing what resources are available to them or the lack of resources in their particular community, a lack of motivation, maybe feeling a little bit overwhelmed, uh, maybe transportation, maybe money is a, a barrier to being able to um, take care of themselves. The third skill in the PLEASED acronym is eating balanced meals. And we recognize for our clients that this isn't always possible. Um, and we often will say to them, it doesn't mean that you have to go to a plant-based, completely organic diet, but rather are there small changes that you could make in your day-to-day -day routine that would have an impact on how you're feeling about yourself and your emotional well-being. So encouraging them to try to get a little bit of food from each food group, you know, are we eating enough food? Are we eating too much food? Uh, and also a routine around eating. So going all day and binging at night isn't going to be helpful. So are we getting nourishment throughout the day? Next is acknowledging the impact of substance use or gambling. So recognizing how these things are going to impact our mood, our relationships, um, our physical, as well as our financial well-being. And if somebody's goal is harm reduction, do they know how or when to use or gamble in order to decrease the risk to those other life areas? The next skill is sleep. And we talk a lot about um, sleep hygiene with our clients and the importance of sleep and how that helps to regulate our mood. So having a consistent wake uh, or sleep time is going to be really important. It helps to send signals to the body that tells us it's time for us to start to shut down or it's time for us to wake and get our day going. Um, so we wanna make sure that we start a routine somewhere around an hour before bedtime. That helps to cue the body to know what's coming. And our our routine tends to include things that are restful uh, or relaxing activities. Um, so we certainly don't want to be going to the gym necessarily, but perhaps maybe it's doing a mindfulness exercise, doing a little bit of breathing, and even just those simple things like brushing your teeth, washing your face, putting on your pajamas, um, any of those kinds of pieces will be really important. We also talk a little bit about the environment that they're sleeping in. So what does the bedroom look like? Um, is it too bright? Is it too dark? Uh, is it um, too quiet, too loud, too hot, too cold? So all of those different pieces are going to be important in making sure that people are getting a good night's rest. 
Second to last here is exercise. We all know how important exercise is for our minds and our bodies, um, but for some people it can feel very overwhelming uh, adding in some sort of an exercise routine. So again, kind of like uh, eating, we really stress to our clients that this doesn't mean you need to go out and buy a gym membership um, and you know hit the gym every day, all day, but rather again, finding places in your daily routine where you could make a small change um, to help encourage and promote that emotional well-being. So maybe it's you know taking the stairs, parking further away in the parking lot, maybe you're shoveling snow, raking leaves, doing some gardening, playing with pets, kids, whatever it is um, that you feel would be helpful to add into your day. And that leads us to the last piece, which is really important, is daily. Doing these things on a daily or as close to possible basis to make sure that we are getting the most benefit from them. Um, trying to find ways to build these into our daily routine is going to be critical, and starting small is going to be really important. So again, it doesn't feel overwhelming for clients. Um, we often talk about with our clients the importance of using these skills proactively. Um, if we are using them proactively, then we are keeping the temperature temperature of those emotions, the intensity of those emotions down because we are more in check with our emotional well-being. So that is the PLEASE acronym and emotional self-care.